Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths. And more specifically, the start of what is hopefully going to be a complete little series on fuel engines. Yes, I have mustered my courage and I'm ready to tackle this topic again. Because fuel engines are one of those things in From the Depths that, even though I use them all the time, I feel I will kind of suck at explaining them, but I will do my best and brace yourself, because I'm braced, uh, because this is the kind of topic in which uh, a certain subset of the From the Depths uh, hive mind gets kind of frothy about. The engine nerds in the From the Depths community, thank goodness they exist on one hand, but on the other hand, they frighten me with how much they are committed to make the numbers look nice. So. Uh, disclaimer, first of all, or I guess additional disclaimer, I am not that good at fuel engines because I'm lazy. If it has enough power to make all my things work, uh, then I'm happy and I kind of leave it there. But the great thing about fuel engines is that uh, they can be very simple and straightforward, or they can be as complicated as you like. You can see here, like, there's like, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's like eight prefabs up here. It's, um... That's just the starting things that you start with. It's, it's ridiculous. And yeah, today, to start off with, we're going to start with the simplest kind of fuel engine, which is an injector-based fuel engine. There's broadly three kinds. Uh, there's your injector engines, which are powerful and compact, but not efficient at all. There are your supercharger engines, which are very highly efficient at low loads. And then there's your turbocharger engines, which make my brain melt. And hopefully by the time I get around to those, I will have frantically done my homework enough to talk about them, uh, which can be powerful and efficient, but they tend to not be very compact because they are absolute nightmare of exhaust spaghetti. And then you have hybrid engines in which uh, they're a combination of um, a whole bunch of the other ones uh, and their exhaust is linked up in a way that's quite cunning and efficient. But, uh, injectors. To start off with, with your fuel engine, you first need, and it's embarrassing that I always forget to do this, you need a fuel, at least one. And then you need your generator and your crankshaft. Pretty much every fuel engine starts off this way. And then you need a cylinder. And the wonderful thing about uh, injector engines is that there's pretty much only one kind. Uh, the Tetris is very simple because where, where are you hidden? Here's your injector. You will note that it has two attachment points which attach onto the cylinders. It means that this shape is, well, basically it. You have nailed it. And from here, um, you can just make this a lot bigger. You can just prefab this and link it out like that. But you do need to worry about cooling. And uh, with cooling, with uh, fuel engines, you have two options. You have radiators, which attach to the crankshaft or the cylinders directly. Or you have exhaust pipes, which attach directly to the cylinders and nowhere else. So radiators are great because... Um, you can slap them anywhere and they cool the entire engine, but, exo uh, but uh, they make your whole engine less efficient. Uh, but exhausts only cool uh, the cylinder they are attached to. So you can see here that this cylinder uh, has a little red warning sign saying not enough cooling, it can overheat. Injectors run really hot, so cooling is very important for them, so a significant amount of their I guess their volume is actually taken up by cooling, so you need at least two exhausts uh, per cylinder if you want the thing to actually exhaust properly. So I need to move that fuel block and put it somewhere else. This is a garbagey example of a fuel engine, but here we have a thing that at stable power is around uh, 2241.7. If you look down in the lower right, the actual, the engine power displayed is a lot more than that. It's like over 3,400. This is because engines lose power the more they heat up, so the more cooling they get, the more efficient they get, and in particular with injectors, it's better to have more than less. In fact, less is not even an option. So if we go here, see it says 2241, and now it's 2294, so the more cooling on these things, the better. So. You have a choice to make with your fuel injection engines. You can use the exhausts, which is a good idea generally because it doesn't cost efficiency. Or you can be super lazy. So one perfectly valid uh, fuel in, uh, injector engine is something like this. Uh, bearing in mind that um, 
Uh, injectors are already, like, pretty inefficient, so radiators, well, you've already committed to, like, burning entire uh, patrol boats full of resources if you're going to be using injector engines, particularly if you make them big, because you can make them quite big. So, in this particular case, you could do something like this, and something like this. There you go. And we need a little bit more fuel. And our stable power is about 2,491. But there you go. And you don't need to thread this uh, through the hull or anything like that. This will do just fine. Uh, I have a personal favorite, which is a slightly more optimized... Uh, fuel injector engine. Where are you? It is the 3x3 exhaustless injector. I've used these uh, in the past quite a lot. It's pretty simple. It's just this, but it comes with its own fuel. And if you've got enough fuel, you can just carry on. You'll notice the effective power is less because it has less cooling. Uh, you do get more uh, stable power if you use um, exhaust, though, as we just saw there. We were getting into a little bit more. Let's just have another squiz here, just to show off. Bearing in mind what was that we did before. Remember this number, 2491. Control Y is fantastic. 2491. 2491. I'm going to give my little friend here horns. 2491. Ooh. Actually, that's so. Interesting. Use radiators. It's easier. And that's basically it uh, for injector engines. Um, like I said, you can make these uh, damn big if you want to. Uh, but you're better off just having a whole bunch of separate smaller ones. So instead of making a single gigantic one, it is better to just uh, do something like this. And bearing in mind with radiators, uh, they connect to each other from the side. So if you want to put these two next to each other... You'll see that this engine uh, now has no cooling because, um, well, pretty much no cooling anyway because uh, this radiator is attached to the first one. So, if you want to do something like this, you can flip them round like so and put them next to each other. Cannot emphasize enough that um, uh, you should only use these if, like, um, you don't particularly care uh, about uh, burning materials, if you happen to have a whole lot of them. So, in a campaign context, this is. Uh, something you put on a very small craft uh, that still needs a fair amount of power or on something big enough that it can carry a lot of materials with it because if you don't have a lot of material storage, even if you have enough fuel to fuel these things, uh, you can eat all your money and that can be a very bad idea uh, because then you run out of materials to shoot things with. And that's basically it. Like, injector engines, honestly... This arrangement here, and then you use radiators or exhaust just to keep the damn thing cool, and you're a, you are way to go. Like, there's no, like, you know, it, it feels bad ending this without some uh, kind of explosion, so there we go. Ta-da! That was epic, actually. So yeah, that's Injector Engines for you. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps and there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Farewell.